Hey guys, what's up? My name is Britt and I'm the creator behind the Banana Diaries. So today I'm going to walk you through how to make a sweet potato gnocchi like so. These guys are completely paleo, vegan, and gluten free and dairy free too, but I promise there is a ton of flavor in them. They are actually rolled with cassava flour, which is a grain free flour and also a nut free flour. But if you do not have this on hand, you are more than welcome to use just an all purpose flour or your favorite one to one baking flour that's gluten free. These guys are really easy to make. It's great for a weeknight meal or if you want to prep this ahead on Sunday and then have it at another time during the week. Your kids will love this. Your family's gonna love this. It is amazing. So let's walk through how to do this now. So not only is this recipe gluten-free, but it is also nut-free as well because I know that a lot of vegan and gluten-free and paleo recipes tend to be filled with a lot of nuts and we're not doing that. We're doing carbs because carbs are fantastic. This recipe is a lot easier than you think. It's just four ingredients and you most likely have these. So it's going to be sweet potato mashed, we're going to cook it and mash it, some avocado oil or olive oil or coconut oil, uh, sea salt, and then cassava flour, which not everyone has cassava flour, so don't worry. You can also use your favorite gluten-free one-to-one baking flour or all-purpose flour if you don't need it to be gluten-free and paleo. But I personally love these how they are, so highly recommend doing that. Let's begin by making the dough, and that's like the real trick to this, is making sure that your dough is properly made. So, we have our mashed sweet potato, and I actually just use the end of, a, end of a hand mixer instead of a potato masher, because I couldn't find my potato masher. It's somewhere hidden in this house, and I'm not sure where it is, but, so I just mash it, and you know, it's really easy, you can also use a fork. And now we're going to pour in the flour, and then take our oil, drizzle that all in there, and then do a little sprinkle of sea salt because we don't want these to be blent. Now you basically just combine it all until it's a nice and thick dough. So the dough is going to be crumbly at first, but if you just keep working it, you're basically going to work it like a normal dough. If you've ever made bread before or any kind of dough pastry. Alright, we are nearing the end of it becoming a nice thick dough. What's really cool is that this is a grain-free flour, um, but it's also nut-free, so that's why I really like cassava. And you can find it pretty decently priced on Amazon as well, um, or at your local grocery store. Although I don't recommend buying it there because sometimes the prices are a little bit more expensive. But this is what our dough looks like. Nice, thick, and it actually is like a dough, which is really cool. So just continue kneading it making sure that it's good and if you need a little bit of extra flour don't hesitate to add that in just going to do a little bit of a sprinkling okay so now that our dough is ready we're actually going to form it into basically a long line to cut our gnocchi but we're first going to just flour the surface lightly so that this doesn't stick but it's actually doing pretty well right now so just go ahead and flour your surface. I'm just using some extra cassava flour. Okay, so now that we have our dough, we're just going to take a pizza cutter or a knife and go right through. You could also use basically like a frosting. It's, you know, those flat cake knives that I forget the name of, but you could also use that. That's what people traditionally use. I just have a pizza cutter. You can also use a very thin knife. Take it into a log and just basically roll it out until we get the size gnocchi that we want to have. And if your logs are too long, you can just break it up into smaller logs. All right, you just wanna be kind of gentle with it, but we're going for like one inch thick. All right, now that our gnocchi are, or the start of it is rolled, we're just going to go ahead and slice a little one inch pillows. And yes, I call them pillows because they are literally like little fluffy pillows and I wouldn't mind going to sleep on these. Yes, I said it. <laughs> I would sleep on a sweet potato gnocchi pillow. Now 
now that we have our sweet potato gnocchi all ready to rock in the pot, we are going to bring this to a boil, which it already is. So bring your pot to a boil, add a little sea salt, and now you're just going to gently add them to the boiling water. Give it a little stir and let them cook for about two minutes until they rise. So they're gonna rise and then we'll transfer to the plate and then we will stick them on the pan to sear them in the sauce. So now that the gnocchi are cooked, we are just sauteing some garlic in avocado oil. You can also use olive oil or coconut oil to do this. But basically saute it until it's brown. Now we're going to add in the sage. So now just continue to saute it until it's just fragrant. And we'll add in the rest of the sauce ingredients. Next up we have the coconut milk. Some sea salt. And finally, just a little bit of arrowroot powder. This is going to help the sauce thicken up. Now we're just going to let this cook at medium heat until it starts to thicken up. Once the gnocchi are completely crispy, we're just going to transfer this to the sauce. Now we just coat in the sauce. <sighs> okay, now that we've made these, we get to enjoy. It's the best part of the whole entire video that we get to actually eat what we've created. Look at how pillowy that is. Like that's insane. And it tastes just like a regular gnocchi, but with like a little bit of a sweet potato tang to it. So I highly recommend using the sauce, or you can also swap it in with a marinara sauce. You can also use the cauliflower Alfredo recipe that I'll link down below in the description box. This will go amazing with that because it has a little bit of a cheesy flavor to it then. So I hope you love this recipe as much as I do. And for the full recipe, you can go to my blog, thebananaries.com, and that'll show you the whole entire step-by-step -step process, as well as the list of ingredients and the measurements for everything included in this recipe. Make sure you follow me at the underscore bananaries on Instagram, where I show you a little bit of behind the scenes of the Bananaries Kitchen. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video if you like recipes like this. And until next time, happy eating!